So percent composition. If you were to have a bag of Skittles and you looked inside the Skittles and realized that there were like 10 Skittles in total and five of them were green, you think, wow, that's a lot of green. I'm not used to seeing so many of one color. If you had to figure out the percent of the green Skittles, you'd probably go with five out of 10 times 100. You come up with 50%. That's where you're actually counting the number of Skittles. In this lesson, we're looking at the percent um, expressed but by mass of each element in a compound or of each component in a mixture. Okay, so I've given you a couple of examples here. Looking at CO2, the percent composition by mass, and I'll show you how I figured this out in a subsequent example, but the percent composition by mass of carbon dioxide is 27% carbon and 73% oxygen. Whereas in a mixture of, let's say, a Tylenol tablet, it has the medicinal ingredient called acetaminophen, and then it has filler like other ingredients, so the entire tablet is not acetaminophen. Um, some of it has non-medicinal ingredients, but it turns out by mass that 42% of the tablet is acetaminophen and 58% is the rest of these non-medicinal ingredients. So percent composition can be expressed, right, either referring to the elements that are in a compound, which will remain consistent. So any size sample of CO2, because the formula is CO2, will always have this percent composition. If the manufacturer decides to change the mass of acetaminophen that they're putting in the Tylenol tablet, then that will um, change these percentages. And so whenever you have a mixture, depending on the masses of the components in the mixture, that, that could be variable, that could change. So here's an example. A sample of a white solid compound has a mass of 8.80 grams. We're going to use this mass data to determine percent composition. The mass of the chlorine in the sample is 5.63 grams, and the remainder is calcium. So we're being asked to determine the percent composition of the compound. So this is like the first statement here, that the mass of each element in a compound is expressed by mass. So here we add a percent for carbon and a percent for oxygen. In this question, we need a percent for calcium and a percent for chlorine. So you might already have an idea of how to do this. If so, you could pause the video, work it out, and then check back with the video. But the idea here is that the percent of chlorine, for example, is going to be the mass of that chlorine that was provided over the mass of the compound. And we'll just express that as a percent, so multiplying by 100. So we'll have 5.63 grams divided by the 8.80 grams multiplied by 100 and, and come up with 64.0 percent. I've done three sig figs here because with the division I had three sig figs and three here so I'll do three sig figs in the final answer. Now if the compound's only made of chlorine and the remainder is calcium, so just two elements, then if one element is 64 percent of the mass then I can very quickly figure out the percent of the calcium. So I'll maintain since I'm going to be subtracting the precision so 100.0 minus 64.0, so we'll come up with 36.0%. So therefore, the percent composition of this compound is, can be stated. And so we have the composition being 36.0% calcium and 64.0% chlorine. So that was for a pure, a pure substance, a compound. Now, here's a question about the Tylenol tablet. So the tablet's a mixture, a mixture of acetaminophen plus other non-medicinal ingredients. So I'm giving you the mass of the tablet overall and telling you that the tablet contains 250 milligrams, this would be a regular strength tablet, of acetaminophen. So find the percent composition then of the tablet. So ultimately I'm looking for you to state the percent of acetaminophen in this mixture and the percent of the non-medicinal ingredients. So give it a shot and then check back. Okay, so we needed to start with that 250 milligrams. I'm anticipating doing this percent calculation, but I have to make sure that both units are grams. So I'll convert the 250 milligrams into grams 
And in doing so, the, remember the zero's trailing here, so there's two sig figs. So when I do a unit conversion, I maintain the, the number of sig figs. So two here, two here. So now I plug that in as my numerator, mass of acetaminophen, over the mass of the tablet that was given in the question. And multiplying by 100 and rounding to two sig figs, I finish with 41%. I called it percent of other, those are the non-medicinal ingredients. 100 minus 41 gives us 59%. So the tablet is 41% acetaminophen and 59% non-medicinal ingredients. Okay, so percent composition can be determined as I have by mass data there, but it can also be determined by using molar mass data. So here's a question where you, so this is a theoretical as opposed to experimental determination. So, determine the percent composition of potassium permanganate, KMNO4. And here's where you use molar mass data. So, when we want to determine the percent of potassium, well, it'll be the molar mass of potassium. There's only one potassium in the formula, so just one times the molar mass of potassium over the molar mass of the KMNO4 times 100. When we need to do that for the manganese, the subscript is also a one there. Um, if we were going to do it for the oxygen, I'll just show an example here, the percent of oxygen would be four times the molar mass of oxygen over the molar mass of the KMNO4 times 100. So just be careful that you use the subscript right here and incorporate that into your numerator. So one times the molar mass of potassium really was just the molar mass of potassium. And so if we plug in the 39.10 and calculate the molar mass of KMNO4, we should come up with 158.04. So both of these units are grams per mole and they'll cancel as we go. And then multiply by 100, coming up with 24.74%. Now why don't you go ahead and do that? I mean, I chose to do oxygen next just to show you how the subscript of four would be incorporated into the question. But you could do the percent of manganese and then just subtract from 100 for the oxygen. But I'll do it with the oxygen just so that you can see how that subscript of four played into the calculation. And so we're at 40.50% oxygen. So to look for the remaining percent of manganese, we could do the same calculation we've been doing, or just recognizing that we have the other elements, we can go ahead and subtract the, per the sum of those percents to find the difference from 100. And so we'll finish with 34.76% manganese. So the percent composition of KMNO4 is 34.76%, sorry, I'll state the potassium first, 24.74% potassium, 34.76% manganese, 40.50% oxygen. And why am I reporting these to so many sig figs? Well, because I was using molar mass data and it turned out that rounding them to two digits after the decimal produced four sig figs for each of these numerators and that's what's leading me to the four sig figs in the answer.